All right, so there's this whole Brian Flores thing and Miami, the coach, black discrimination, class action lawsuit. Two controversies at once. With Lots them. of controversies yeah. going on, and we thought uh, great attorney Mark Gergus could weigh in on this since he's had an inside look on what goes on at these own, with the owners and the league and everything else. Mark, you with us? I am. How are you? Good. How is everybody there in the studio? Right. We're good. Um, Yes, I am. I'm in New York, and uh, and it is kind of the talk of the town. This uh, lawsuit and the um, trial that's going on with Sarah Palin against the New York Times. So there's competing stories. This one is interesting because they talk about um, Kaepernick, and this is filed in the Southern District in federal court, as opposed to ours, which was under the collective bargaining agreement. And they they do a pretty nice job of the history of racism in the NFL. I mean, it's a very detailed, uh, multi-page um, kind of synopsis of uh, using their own words against them, using the Kaepernick situation against them, using the, um, uh, the, the situation that actually has been getting a lot of play most recently is that the allegation in there is that Brian Flores was told in 2019 by Steve Ross, who's the owner of the, um, the franchise, to uh, he'd pay him $100,000 for every game he lost because he wanted to tank the team to get a better draft uh, pick, which yeah. has been making all kinds of noise about that today. Allegations of the Browns doing that as well with their coach. I think their Hugh coach Jackson came out. claims that it was insinuated he would do well to drop some games, right? Right. All right. So first things first, why does Flores make this a class action lawsuit? Why not, from a legal standpoint, what's in it for him, or is there anything in it for him? Well, they're arguably, arguably, if they do it as a class, they may get around some of the problems that you normally would have run into uh, with suing the NFL. The NFL has got uh, various kinds of uh, protections, so to speak, and there is a thought, and I would be speculating here, but I'm, uh, I'm somewhat, somewhat intrigued by bringing it as a class lawsuit um, maybe there, the, the, the problem with the class lawsuit is you've got to have some members of the class. And I don't know unless they're going to attract a number of other clients um, who's going to step forward on this. Because it would you, you know what happens when you take action against the NFL. You get frozen out. So... Um, what's your thoughts and what's your predictions? And then how does, uh, I mean, the NFL right now with Gruden is going after them as well. Well, and the, the thing they have in common, they're all whoopsie emails and texts. Right. Right. And Gruden is mentioned predominantly in this lawsuit as well. They go through and say that that's part of the, uh, shows the discrimination that he was allowed to just kind of resign when they knew about these things for months and months and months. And mind you, that, the Gruden text, also came out of a, another lawsuit where discovery was done, and the NFL is apparently still holding on to, um, for dear life, a number of the emails there, which may come out um, in another piece of litigation, because apparently they, they, they shed light in a horrible, horrible way on what the NFL was doing and tolerating. Is um, so the Rooney rule is the when you're interviewing for new coaches that X amount of interviews must be in a minority group, two. two. So that's the rule. So the kind of the allegation is is people do what they do, which is fine. We'll interview two brothers for this, but we're, we've already decided on the white guy right. to be the the head coach. Is that is that kind of the allegation? <laughs> It's not only the allegation, it implanted in the complaint itself, the legal document, the tests between um, the, uh, the plaintiff and Belichick. And Belichick is telling him 
that they've already decided on the guy that they're going to hire three days before Flores has got to set for an interview. So it shows that that's some pretty good evidence that uh, they, the Giants were just kind of going through the motions. Is Belichick uh, exposed here, or did he just sort of make a mistake? Like he just thought he got the wrong yeah. name and said congratulations. I, I feel yeah, like- <laughs> he's got a. He's, he basically says something like, uh, "I really screwed up here. Um, uh, wrong, wrong guy. I thought it was you, and he wasn't." And so uh, that uh, I think what you are seeing is part of what generally happens. Um, they get together behind closed doors. I mean, I, you know, they mentioned one of the um, the uh, things that was leaked in our litigation, which was a uh, accusation of just this kind of shenanigans going on when they were behind closed doors, not knowing that somebody had taped what was happening in there. Uh, and they also cite how the league had kowtowed to the president because the president had said this was a winning issue for him. And that was, to this day, I'm sure why one of the owners had uh, changed his mind almost dramatically. And um, it will be interesting to see if they try to get at the uh, Steve Ross depot that was done in the Kaepernick's because that would be illuminating, I'm sure. Well, so what's the overall allegation, uh, not the allegation, but sort of the opinion, which is, are they not hiring black coaches because they're black? Because, well, Dave Damashek comes from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, is he the only, is your coach? Rooney rule, it's kind of a bad look that it so happens that the organization that established the Rooney rule named after Dan Rooney is the only uh, is the only team currently employing a man of color. I think, though, Mark, a- a- as far as this goes, it's going to be hard, even though you have the, the black and white chronology, pun not intended, black and white, but the, the Belichick text message is two days before um, announcing Dable has the job, and it does speak to an old boys club going on there that Belichick somehow would know what the Giants' business is. The more damning thing ultimately feels to me like for the league, legal or otherwise, moral or otherwise, is that you have an owner telling his coach, like, hey, let's have a bad day at the office today, coach. You c- the worst thing for professional sports leagues is that the games aren't on the up and up, right? Is that the I, thing that they're I, most concerned I, about going forward? I think they have to be. I mean, have, how are they ever in a million years as a league um, going to uh, – and ironically – I'm told, I, I don't remember if this is true, you would, that the fans were actually rooting for them to lose <laughs> at the time. Um, if that's the case, it's somewhat ironic mm-hmm. that now the owner would come under some kind of scrutiny by virtue of telling them to lose and that he, you know, the, the kind of takeaway is, is he's had too much success uh, for, for our taste. And we really wanted a franchise quarterback. And there's also the allegation, who do you think they're referring to? To a marquee quarterback that they were trying to tamper with by uh, Mr. Ross setting up a meeting on his yacht for lunch with Flores. And the quarterback was supposedly going to stop on by and that that was another uh, tampering style violation by the ownership of the Dolphins. All right, Mark. Now, on to pressing matters. I want to. I'd like you to paper a deal for me, okay? <laughs> now listen, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I don't. I don't know if you write. You know, if you got uh, one of your secretaries next to you, or, you, or I'll. I'll give you the He's beats. He's in the bathtub right now. <laughs> Here are the beats right now. You ready? I'm uh, <laughs> I just talked to Martin Cove, Crease from Cobra Kai. Okay. One of, one of the biggest TV shows on right now. I floated the idea of he and I coming together to promote an MMA fight between Billy Zapka and Ralph Macchio, an actual pay-per-view event. Mark, you know the big three. You know how this world yeah. works. You know this world Absolutely. works. The, 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 Absolutely. The Paul brothers are getting like you know, fighting Mike Ty- old has been fighters fighting YouTube stars. These guys are lining their pockets with cash. This would be the biggest event 
the nation would be captured. The imagination of the nation of the nation, uh, na- the world, the world would be captured by this fight. And Cove is on board. This is genius. Cove, of course, it's genius. It's leaving my mouth. Cove is going to be my inside man who's going to make this fight happen. There's going to be a real fight. MMA rules. All right. Now, I don't want Cove uh, half cocked. Oh, hey, fellas, I've got an idea. I had an idea on the way into the studio. No, no, no. I, I, I need this thing papered. I well, I used to have I used to have an inside track on that show, but uh, Jake's no longer dating her, so uh, I have to revert back to the traditional way. Your son was dating somebody from the cast. Yes. Well, okay, all right, but they're they're broken <laughs> off. That's been broken off. He's got a wonderful new uh, girlfriend. All right, so <laughs> all I got all I got is Cove here, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, I don't. I'm going to be left out in the weeds here. I'm, in, I'm in for I, a taste. I, I think we got to do some. Well, now that when does this? When does your show drop? This, this show is yes. tomorrow, as we as we tape it in mere hours. Okay. In mere hours. In mere hours. Okay, so I've got to I got to do something before it drops tomorrow. Otherwise, somebody's going to steal your idea. Right. Time is of the of the of the essence, but exactly. <laughs> the the pay per view. First off, there's the gate. You know, there's just right. uh, Texas Stadium, the Rose Bowl, whatever. There's a there's the gate. Mm-hmm. That that's a ton of cash. Then there's all the memorabilia and all the stuff, concessions and all that kind of stuff. But the pay per view, the pay per view is where the money is. The in the amount of press, free press, mm-hmm. every late night show, monologue, uh, CNN, Fox, every every morning radio show. They'd all, Joe Rogan, they're all buzzing about it. They'd all be buzzing about it for months, mm-hmm. months leading into it. Healing the nation. Would we have, mm. would we have Adam on the undercard? Oh. Oh. There oh. we go. It's come I up fight time. Kaepernick <laughs> on the undercard. Red, white, and blue trunks like Apollo Creed. A Rocky. Wait a minute. Apollo Creed. Apollo. That's right. Make it happen. I'm telling you, you're, look, you're... I'll get right on it. Well, because, because you you got your, your F. Lee Bailey meets P.T. Barnum. You know what I mean? That's really who you right, are. So I'll, I'll, get, I'll get right on it. Hey, right on it. Clubber Lang v. Apollo Creed, yeah. Weathers v. T, would also be a nice undercard, too. Think about that. We're yeah. going to have a whole night. Well, we're, 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 we're going to fill up the undercard, but this, I, I said to Cove, bigger than... Billie Jean King fight. Um, sorry, Riggs. With the, Rick, Bobby Riggs and Billie Jean King. You guys aren't old enough, but that's all this country talked about for a full six months mm-hmm. leading in a tennis match. Mm-hmm. That's tennis. Yeah. And it was it was something. And this is MMA. It's not tennis. Yeah. MMA. Right. Garagos, I have a, I have another gem for you too. As we're if we're spitballing sporting events here, and this is how you answer to the NFL. What we do, we can't have teams tanking. It exposes teams and, and their ulterior motives. We replace the Pro Bowl perennially the week between the title games and the Super Bowl with the loser bowl. The two worst teams play one another. The winner gets the first overall pick. Therefore, there would be no trying to tank to get the number one pick. You have to play your way to the number one pick. How say you at the player level? Why would the NFLPA get in the way of this if you're pl- paying the players to participate in this game? I love that. Thank you. I absolutely love that. Thank you. Can I have a busy day. All right, Mark. Uh, paper reason- that one too. You can paper this over. I'll see you in a bit. All right. For reasonable doubt, you can listen to it now. We'll get into the Flores thing. But but first off, let's prioritize, Mark. Yep. Got to paper this okay. game. All right. I'm on. All right. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> I. It's gonna wet your beak. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think this is far fetched, and oh. I can't tell how seriously you're taking it. But I'm I'm behind it. I'm behind it too. It's, it's think, doable. If John Grease calls back and says, "Guess what? They're in." I think he'll take it very seriously. Yeah. I, I just I I I'm I'm thinking. In a, in a world where there's subjects, you know, we were, we were talking about Fauci, like half people, some 
half the country wants to talk shit about Fauci. The yeah. other half doesn't want to know about it, doesn't want to talk no. about it, and vice versa in all different directions. We, this subject would be a subject that every platform would yes. discuss. There's yes. no, this would not, this would be on the extras, the entertainment There's shows. No third rail. It would be on the TMZs. Mm. Yeah. It would be on CNN. It would be on every late night show. It, it would, it would there be nonstop discussion of this. Yeah, because the talking heads have the nostalgia for the, the actual franchise from mm-hmm. back in our day. Yes. Now, would you like to know the actual ages of Ralph Macchio and William Zabka? Or does yeah. that not matter? Ah, give it to me. Billy, William Zabka, 56. All right. Ralph Macchio, hold on to your butts, 60 years old. Yeah, but still got a lot of fight left. Oh, in yeah, him. a lot of fight. All right. A lot of fight, a lot of bite. Zabka would work him over, but good. I think so. Prove well, me wrong. Prove me right. wrong, Macho. That's what we're saying. And Ralph really is, because we, we've had him on, the nicest human being on the earth. We, that's not going to cut it when you're fighting like that. Until they shut the cage to that <laughs> We're caging it. I didn't know it was a... Oh, yeah. They shut the <laughs> cage door. That. That's a different... <laughs> that's a different so Ralph. It's Thunderdome, a different Ralph. in other words. It's the, it's the octagon. Yeah, they yeah. Gotta, they gotta, Two men enter. They got to climb in. I mean, you know, there's a door. Yeah. It's a cage. <laughs> it's locked they from the outside. It. That's how it works. Yeah. That's right. All right. Let me tell you about uh, Geico. Do you own, do you rent your home? Will you do one or the other? And I bet you work hard, too. You know, it's easy as bundling with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around the house. So go to Geico.com, get a quote, and see just how much you could save and how easy it is to save. When you get your bundle working at Geico, that is at uh, geico.com. All right. I got to look. I, I, I'm no good to anyone anymore. I got, I got, got ideas. Yeah. I got to get on the blower with uh, Garagos. I got to yeah. get Marty. Let's wrap this up. And bring Marty. In. I got to get Marty on the blower. Let's, let's bring this home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad. The podcast, Minus Three and Extra Points with Cousin Sal, is where you can find the great oh, Dave Dan. I appreciate it, but let me just say, Minus Three, if you are an Adam Carolla fan, which obviously you are if you're listening, his great pal, Kevin Hench. I mean, Ace, you got to join us on Minus Three one of these days because your boy Hench is worked up into a lather every week, every Thursday. Listen to his thoughts on all things Tom Brady and otherwise. It's hysterical. I uh, love Hench and love his takes. You can shoot uh, Dave a tweet at Damashek and, of course, uh, Marty Cove, kicking it with the Coves, available mm-hmm. now where you find finer podcasts. And, of course, Cobra Kai. You can go to amcroll.com. Uh, first show, Brea, this weekend. Sunday sold out with Shatner, but uh, still a couple tickets available to the Dennis Quaid. Second show, just go to amcroll.com for all you need. Until next time, Adam Kroll for Dave Damashek. And Gina Grad and Marty Cove saying, oh, and Mark Garrigo saying, mahalo. I mean, that's a, you can do that with the Rams rag. You, right. You do that with the terrible towel. All right. Well, there's a whole nother can of worms you just opened right. for yourself. No. Or whoop Cope, ass. Cope holds up the terrible towel, and he says, the terrible towel is poised to strike. It's so hard to steal. Let's get him! He didn't say a goddamn thing about the Rams or anyone else. Come up with your own shtick.